What's going on, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? I am Zombie Cartman. And today, I'm doing a comparison video of the Xbox Elite Wireless Series 1 and 2 controllers. Starting with the Series 1, you can see it was done in a black with chrome finish. The backs of the hand grips were a rubberized, texturized grip. And the top of the hand grips is just rubberized with no texture. The parts of the controller, like the D-pad and the thumbsticks, were easily removed and swapped out because they were held in with magnets. It also had this two-position selector switch for having two different button layouts, so you could program multiple button layouts and switch them on the fly as you were playing. As you can see, the thumbsticks were easily removed and swapped from one to another. And it came with a variety of different ones that you could choose from. Also, it had trigger stops that were just selector switches on the back, but they were just two positions, so you could either have full trigger or about half trigger, depending on where you put those selectors. There was also spots for four paddles on the back. As you can see, I just have the two short paddles because that's all I ever used with this controller. And the short paddles I actually trimmed down with my Dremel tool, so they're a little bit shorter than normal. Here I'll go ahead and attach the long paddles, and you can see they stick down quite a ways. I actually had a hard time using the controller with those on there because I would just try to grip the controller and end up hitting those paddles and pushing buttons that I didn't want to push. And now we'll go ahead and take a look at the Series 2. Right away you can see that there is a textured rubberized grip on the top of the hand grip section of the controller as well as the back. And the grip goes up the sides of the controller a lot further than it did on the Series 1. Another good thing about the grips is that the warmer they get, the better they actually grip your hands. With the Series 1, once your hands started to warm up, the controller would get very slippery. Also, you've got textured triggers on the Series 2 that you didn't have on the Series 1, although they're barely noticeable when you're actually using the controller. The Series 2 also has three position trigger stops, as you can see on the back here. So at position 1, you've got full trigger depression. Position 2, you can only depress the trigger halfway. And at position 3, you've just got a hair trigger that you can barely bump. Another major difference with the Series 2 over the Series 1 is the internal battery pack, which can be charged once and then used for 40 hours of gameplay. The controller can be charged in the case like so, or you can remove the battery charging unit and then plug it in and set it wherever you want. The battery charging base sits magnetically fixed inside the case, which then lines up conveniently with this hole at the top of the case where you plug it in. Both controllers would have came with a high quality 10 foot USB cable although the Series 1 would have came with a micro USB. As you can see, the port there is micro USB. And the Elite Series 2 comes with a USB-C cable. People have asked me about the weight of the controllers because the Series 1 was quite heavy compared to a normal Xbox controller. So here we see the Series 1 weighing in at 342 grams and that is with batteries included next we have the elite series 2 which does have its internal battery pack and from the feel of it feels just a little bit lighter than the series 1 and as you can see it's going to weigh 331 grams so 11 grams shy of the Series 1, which is not much lighter, but it is slightly lighter than the Series 1. 
for comparison, I also went ahead and weighed a regular Xbox One controller with the batteries inserted. And I found it to weigh 235 grams, which is almost 100 grams lighter than the Series 2 and is a full 100 grams lighter than the Series 1. I've also been asked if the buttons and thumbsticks were interchangeable with each other. Sadly, the thumbsticks for the Series 1 are not usable with the Series 2. I'm not sure if the Series 2 thumbsticks are usable with the Series 1, and I don't know why you would want to do that to begin with. But if you do have both the Series 1 and the Series 2, you'll find that you will not be able to use the thumbsticks between the two. However, you can switch out and use the D-pads from either Series 1 or Series 2. So you could kind of change the look of your Elite Series 2 if you still had that part. The paddles for the back of the controller are also interchangeable between Series 1 and Series 2 as they're pretty much identical to each other with the exception of the Series 2 being all gunmetal gray with their accessories. Speaking of accessories, with the Series 1, you got two different domed thumbsticks that were actually kind of slick and I didn't find very useful. You also got two long thumbsticks that were the traditional texture, as well as the arcade directional pad. You also got the two short thumbsticks that I have on the controller, as well as the regular thumbsticks and the regular directional pad. For the Series 2, you actually got the charger base, which you can remove like I showed before. You also got these two smoother thumbsticks that are just smooth, but kind of concave. You also got a domed thumbstick that is slightly textured, which is kind of nice. And you got one long thumbstick, which, you know, you would want to use that on probably the right side for precision aiming and stuff like that. You also got the traditional paddles, the arcade D-pad, and you got this little extra here, which is the thumbstick tensioning tool. To use the thumbstick tensioning tool, you're going to need to insert it into the slots inside the center of the thumbstick once you actually have the head of the thumbstick off, and just give it a slight turn. There's three different positions for the thumbstick tension. Here I actually have the screw set to the stock position and by inserting the tensioner and turning it one click clockwise, it will set the screw inside further which has it as tight as possible. If you turn the tension screw back one click counterclockwise, you'll be back at the stock position. And then if you turn the tensioner one more click to the left or counterclockwise, you'll actually be at the loosest position. So it's just three positions. Like I said, I believe you're giving it about an eighth of a turn for each click. And as you can see, I've kept the tension screw at the default position for the right stick so that I can easily verify that I have it in the default position on the left. The big Xbox button in the middle no longer depresses when you push it. It just kind of turns on and pushes like a normal button. And then you've got your button layout selector switch here in the middle, which has four different options, it would appear. And I've also been told that you can use the existing button layouts that you had programmed for the Series 1 with the Series 2. You just got to go into the button layout manager and select them and you'll be able to upload them to the series two which is pretty convenient and if you didn't know microsoft actually partnered with scuff to make the elite wireless controllers here i have an old scuff one that i bought back when i got my xbox one this was among the first ten thousand built as you can see by the serial number 
and it was about $210 when I ordered it. It does have the textured grips, and it's got custom thumbsticks. It's even got trigger stops, but to get to them, you actually have to remove the, the gripped-out backing section to get to some screws in there. And then I've also got a Scuf 360 controller that I paid $199 for that has textured grips as well. And you can see it's got trigger stops, but they were adjusted with a Allen wrench. It's also got a power indicator light, and it's got just the two paddles on the back because that's all I've ever really wanted or needed. But yeah, that's why there's so many similarities between the Elite Wireless controllers and the Scuff products that you may have seen in the past. It's because they actually partnered and Scuff helped them make the Elite Wireless. After thoroughly comparing the Elite Wireless Series 1 and Series 2, I feel comfortable saying that the Elite Wireless Series 2 is the best controller money can buy right now. And like always, thanks for watching.